Hello everyone, welcome. My name is MJ Pestridge. Welcome to another P3D video. Today we're going to be looking at a new addition to uh, P3D add-ons. Um, it's by RD Presets and it's called RD Shade. Um, it's a new add-on. Basically, it's reshade basically. Um, and there's a couple of disclaimers for, for this. Um, I'm basically going to go through the entire app and show you how to get the best of it. Um, and sort of explain what everything does and uh, give you a couple of disclaimers. Like, for instance, the first one being if you use Evan Shade, if you already use Reshade, or if you have you, uh, installed my Sky Pack, you've already created what... Um, about 70% of what this app does. Um, this app doesn't bring anything new um, in terms of files it doesn't insert any files into your sim it just allows you to modify the cfg files the um fx files the shader files and tweak them to your liking that that's already you know in your sim about 30 percent of this app um is in the p3d menu itself that you have the ability to change um i'd say about 40 percent of this um, is in the CFG files for volumetric clouds and P3D and then like the rest 20-30% is in the FX files and shader files so you have already got everything at this what this can do um, already at your fingertips but this just explains what you're doing um, as you change the values and that's that's the good thing about this um, so if you don't know how to tweak p3d this basically just shows you how so this video is going to be kind of like a tutorial but also kind of like a review i was given this copy for free to have a look at create some presets for so thank you very much um and uh yeah let's let's get started so when you first install this um and i'm sure this is going to be updated in the future um as as moving forward but uh the very first thing i would say after you've installed this is to make a backup of your p3d cfg your volumetric cloud cfg um your shaders and um your fx files because this is going to be altering those and if you've already got like evan shade or my sky pack then as i say you've already got a preset that you've made but that's what this program this app this add-on this is what it does it allows you to make presets for your sim um in order to get different visual looks out of it now i guarantee you the developers weren't thinking this when they made this app but there is something very powerful under the hood of this app that i don't think was made by design um but uh that i'm going to be definitely taking advantage of um to to really boost and enhance the visual look of my sim to be more accurate around the world so for let me just have a little discussion here about what flight simmers with p3d generally try and do with their sim when they first install it you know you set up the brightness and the saturation and get the visual look of your sim like pleasing to your eyes and what most people will do is they'll look outside into the sky and go right that's what color blue in the sky is right so this is the color blue i've got here we're sitting in japan and that's what color blue is over japan and what users what flight simmers tend to do is exactly that they'll look outside their own window go ah that's what the sky color blue is let me match that to my sim i know i do it um i know a couple of friends who have done it and i'm sure most people have done this when they're setting up the saturation bloom and brightness of their sim um, i've done videos on how to calibrate your pc to your sim to your gpu card um, i advise go check those out as well um, but uh, a little bit of a um, thing here like this this app here this preset app all it does is allows you to create profiles or presets that you can then just quickly um you know open or use whenever you want um i wish it gave you the ability to save your current state of your sim it doesn't actually give you that option you can restore p3d default shaders you can reset a current preset but you can't save 
what you've got present so that's why i say make sure you back everything up because once you start playing with this and click save it's going to change you what you've already sort of put into the, your sim and it's going to be you know near enough impossible unless you go through each tab and click restore or undo back to what it was not what the default is because when you're going through these um, menus and again and i think this is another thing i wish was in here it gives you the p3d default values it doesn't give you the default values of what you've got currently in your sim it gives the p3d default so when you click restore it's restoring p3d default values back in not what was currently set by yourself um like if you've downloaded my sky pack it's there's already cfg changes um, in p3d so it doesn't restore back to any changes you've made it just restores back to p3d default but um so but guess what guys the the sky color around the world is different depending on where you live so los angeles sky blue is different from sydney australia sky blue which is different from china sky blue to london heathrow sky blue they're all different shades of blue different tints and the reason being is because the earth is round the light enters through the atmosphere at an angle and hits the landscape um, in different wavelengths all across the globe so it automatically gives off a um, a slight shade or tint um, of the blue that you'd expect to see plus also there's a lot of other factors that determine the sky color in terms of do you live near the sea um, do you live in a city where there's smoke and light pollution um, and, and what time of year as well will also dictate the temperature of the sun, which again dictates the color of the sky. So all these factors go into changing this sky blue color. So everyone is really going to have a different sky blue color that they have in their mind as that is what an accurate sky looks like and that's probably why you know programs like shade or uh, like reshade or even shade have been created so you can actually you know have different levels of blue or different levels of color and saturation um at your fingertips for whenever you want and this is this is the biggest i think the most powerful thing of this is that it allows you to create profiles presets so you can create a london preset a barcelona preset a australia preset a uh, you know canada preset depending on where you live in the world you can actually tweak it accurately to where you you know are positioned in the world so if you're flying in australia you can have an australia blue sky and that to me is the biggest um draw or feature of this app is that it allows you to create presets and profiles and for that very reason is how i'll be utilizing it is to create an accurate sky blue around the world but the disclaimer is if you as i say have already got evan shade or downloaded my sky pack there you've already used about 70 percent of what is in this this uh, add-on this add-on does not bring anything new to what you can already do in your sim it just explains what you're doing and allows you to tweak it knowing the change you're going to make saying that as i say there's about 30 percent of all of this you won't need if you are using my sky pack and you want to continue to use the sky pack because anything you do in this tool will override evan shade reshade or my sky pack so that's why i say back everything up because if you don't like the changes you've made you can just revert back so saying all that let's go through this whole thing so the help section is pretty nifty there's buttons here that'll click you onto their website where you can actually download presets uh, same here where it says default presets if we click that button there's about nine people who have already um, offered up presets and and you know these are going to be very specific to their um, their sim but you can try those out see what they look like um, clicking this takes you to the website so you can actually download other people's that they've uploaded I'm, I'm assuming that when you save a preset it might upload it to their website automatically I'm not really sure um, 
it's not really explained but you can also clear your shader cache now this is really really helpful uh the only other place i've seen that being offered is um in black marble base where it clears the directx cache and your shader cache as well now i really recommend i mean they recommend to do it at least once a month and i'd do it every flight i would like when i um set up my sim for a flight i clear all the temp files you know automatically re-index everything and so it's almost like a fresh sim when i go in um but uh you know you don't, you don't have to do it as drastic as that but um so let's get straight into it uh there's different tabs here doing different things um each tab has uh sort of other things to uh flick through here um one thing to note as well is um make sure that you whenever you boot this thing up you have your sim running already like don't boot the uh, shade program up then your sim because when you whenever you uh, make a tweak you have to reload the shaders in your sim in order to see it uh take effect they're a bit naughty in the fact that they've advertised this is you can change all these things live i think what they mean is while your sim is running because things don't change live like if i if i'm moving this cockpit brightness uh, slider and we go inside the cockpit i'm not going to see a visual cockpit change um as i'm moving the slider or as i'm moving these values it's only when i click apply and then it asks me to reload the shaders and my screen goes black is when i actually see the change so um the the fact that they're advertising it is you can do everything live mm, bending it a little bit but um let's let's have a look at this shall we so i mean i've already preset everything up here i've gone through all what i want to do and I, I like the fact that there's a nice little index here of every every change you've made already um and it doesn't actually put in what you haven't changed so um in the lighting section we have aircraft and scenery brightness i mean this is self-explanatory i don't really need to explain it um there's also a tab for your minimum and maximum exposure of the entire sim so basically like what's the the brightest white and the darkest black basically um auto gen night lighting uh the fact that you can actually change the buildings uh which i don't think we've got any around us to sh show but you can actually change how bright the buildings are at night um which which is a nifty tool for uh creating accurate realism uh autogen saturation now this does not affect the trees any changes you make with these few buttons we've already spoke won't really affect the trees so you have to be careful because if you tweak too much you're going to have bright green trees so be careful specular lighting um and terrain saturation this this one i find is really handy in balancing out the the difference of color between say orbex and photoreal and the default sim um cockpit shadows allows you to set the resolution although this is actually something you'd be setting in the menu when you move that slider for quality it's the same thing uh terrain shadows again exactly the same thing the, the these two are sliders in your menu in fact about i would say about 30 percent of everything in here is in the p3d menu already so why it's included in here is a little bit mm, but at least it gives you an explanation um the other 40 percent i'd say is in uh cfg files and the remaining like 20 percent is in the fx and shader files so um cockpit saturation so all the lighting basically for the sim now the cloud section this actually allows you to choose either original or volumetric now i gotta say reshade and evan shade to a degree and i definitely think these guys are d shade use original i don't think they use volumetric all the shade programs i i believe have kind of almost been designed around the fact of not using ea there was a move actually when p3d version 5 first came out where a lot of people including the one a couple of people who actually uh, create uh, these presets here the names in here were really against ea when it came out and was really laying into it 
um, when it first came out, and uh, and I'm pretty sure I still use the legacy clouds and the legacy sky textures. And I have a feeling this program is kind of designed to use, you know, in that fashion as opposed to volumetric. But it does work with volumetric. But again, I don't change any of this because I oh, I've got the sky pack, which has already done all that. So. Um, just don't enable it basically uh, that's what I do I just I haven't even enabled this it's just leave it disabled um, it doesn't actually give you f loads of control either it's kind of limited in the fact that you set your slider level you set what kind of resolution it doesn't have the full resolution of the clouds um, it only has a small portion so it it's okay but it's very limited in what it can do for your clouds these the, the the tweaks that I've made to, to True Sky uh, are a lot more detailed, and in fact, have recoded what the cloud resolution slider actually means. So, um, and under Sky, you can change your fog influence. Um, unfortunately, this won't work for volumetric fog. It's just going to be Sky Fog, probably in the non-EA mode. Um, because uh, volumetric fog is built within true sky by default you can't actually change that value so um, sky saturation um, is influenced like it says by the sky textures and ea does not use sky textures it uses sky shaders so um, any sort of thing you change in the sky saturation um, you probably won't actually see a difference when you reload um, back in um environment goes to the water really which i think is a handy tool or uh, although uh these sections are covered in my oceanic pack which is coming out in a couple of days um hdr uh again this custom hdr tone mapping is that hdr fix that's been going around for about a year now this is just uh saying turn it on or turn it off if you've if you've got my sky pack installed you've already turned it on um so don't even need to enable that pbr i think this is a really good one because um i don't think the pbr is strong enough in p3d i think it can be a lot stronger um i've uh enabled like my pbr quite high to be honest <laughs> almost to its maximum in order to um you know uh really bring out the the shaders and the the reflections in the sim um a lot of this is not at the cost of uh, any fps either so but there are a couple of things in here which will cost you fps uh, and it tells you about it in the description here so as i say this is a very well made app this is probably their best add-on that they've ever done it allows you to you to change the red green blue tints of your sim which i think is great the the sim doesn't allow you to do that i wish it did uh contrast tuning as well as changing the high cpu priority which again if you followed my video for unlocking the the power of your cpu you've already done that so you don't need to enable this um autogen draw distance be careful with this one this one can actually change you know uh a, a lot of fps around um and improve texture loading um, I don't know exactly what that does, but I'm guessing it changes the the call for the textures distance. So the more, like, if you enable this, you you will actually see, uh, you know, higher VRAM and um, maybe a drop in FPS. And improve runway lighting. This actually adds entries into the P3D CFG that aren't there to improve runway lighting. Um, and tree optimization. Again, this... This is a tweak that I actually make myself in my CFG file. Um, so I'm kind of glad that it's here, but I don't know what value it inserts into the sim. Um, and the haze issues, this is kind of pretty much enabled by uh, most weather engines. Um, and then you get an overview, but I've never seen anything in this section. So what we're going to do is basically, I have already created a tweak so this is basically my sim without any tweaks whatsoever so this is what uh, it looks like and now i'm going to throw in my tweak so we want to open preset scroll down put in the atom experience click open would you like to apply the loaded hdr settings now click yes and then it asks you in the sim to 
well, it should ask you in the sim to reload the shaders, but it didn't. That's a bit of a rip, isn't it? Uh, so I opened the presets. Um, I don't need to save it. The apply button should have actually gone. It says active preset, but it hasn't actually loaded anything. So that's a bit of a weird one. Uh, it should have actually... I mean, maybe I have to go through... Right, I think I'm just going to have to go through each one of these, make a slight change, change it back. Oh, no, it, then it clicks that off. Guys, this is this is made on the assumption that you're going to be doing enabling and applying as you go along. And then you save your preset, but it doesn't actually... Use the preset to save the settings the user has set. This way you can easily switch between different settings Well. Losing the presets make it easier. But it doesn't apply it when you do open a preset. So I've opened it. So how do I apply it? It doesn't say apply preset now. It doesn't. There's no... Open preset function to import your settings into their RD shade. Yeah, we've done that, mate. So how about you change it? Presets make it easy. I mean... Reset current preset? Surely you... To the last saved state, yeah. Yeah, I do, mate. Last state resaved. Still nothing. Hey, dude. I mean, this is a bit of a balls up, isn't it? Reset cloud mode or restore all. Live edit shaders. Uh, try open it again. If you click no, cannot apply loaded HDR settings. Loaders are synced every 30 seconds with current. Oh, that's... Uh, okay. Click yes. HDR settings applied. No, it hasn't. Right, well, I guess you've got to go through it one by one. Maybe in an update they'll fix that, but there's no way to apply your preset. It doesn't actually change it, so... I don't know what to say, mate. If I disable that and enable that, that apply goes. So I've literally, even though I've created a preset, I can't apply it. I have to go through one by one and add it then. Adam gives this two thumbs down. Like, <laughs> the basic of what it says it can do, it doesn't actually do. So I don't know if there's something I'm missing or what's going on, but... I mean, these are the here are the tweaks that have been en enabled, but they're not actually changing jack. So, 1.4, 0 0.5. I think that's what it was. And then we click apply. And that's what should have popped up in the first instance. So reload the shaders, everything goes black. I mean, I'm just going to have to go through each one of these. Restore, and then uh, re enable. So 1.2, 0.5, restore, enable, 1.2, 0 0.5, and the apply button disappears. Brilliant. What a load of crap. Anyway, guys, enjoy playing with your sim. Uh, once you start, you won't be able to stop, basically. There we go. Uh, oh, gosh, that's made a big change uh i think it actually now has changed i think it actually now that everything's loaded everything has changed by the looks of it so there we go yeah although it hasn't actually done the pbr change so rip on that one but yeah i think it has changed quite a lot so Anyway, we've got to go through each one. This is bullshit, man. Right, so it now has actually changed everything. Although, I did the PBR reflectance has seemed to have disappeared on, on that. So, let me restore uh, that one. Uh, 1.5 change it 
three. No point seven. And apply that. Reload and hopefully this should now sort that out. Um so yeah, basically it's hmm, glitches in the matrix with it. Um, it it does actually work as you go through and apply each one. It does actually work. It doesn't actually seem to work when you go to load a profile though or a preset. Hopefully that's something that maybe will get rectified. Um, but yeah, I seem to have less PBR on my aircraft now, or I don't know. Let's have a look inside the cockpit. Wait for everything to load back in. Yeah, it seems to be darker in the cockpit, cockpit before than it was before, even though I brightened it. <laughs> Rip. Anyway, guys, enjoy using this program. <coughs> Let's see what happens with it in the future. Who knows? Uh, 1.5. Boost that up again. Reload. Anyway, thank you for watching this video, guys. Um... Uh, this tutorial, this this add-on, um, if you, as I say, if you use my Sky Pack, if you use Evan Shade, there's nothing new here. You don't need to use this, but if you don't use any of that, and you do want to alter uh, the shade of the, your sim according to where you live in the world, or according to where you're going to be flying in the world, this is a great tool to enable you to do that. Um, still too dark, unless there's clouds that have rolled over, maybe, I don't know. Anyway... Um, I'm going to go for a flight uh, using this um, and create some more presets to make everything around the world look a bit more realistic. Thank you for watching. Uh, it hasn't actually affected um, increased performance, decreased performance. Um, it actually hasn't changed any performance, but it has actually included... What? Di are they dynamic trees? No, they're not. I was going to say, has it injected dynamic <laughs> trees into my sim so let's uh, head up it's snowing it's dark there's a big massive fat cloud um so let's head up here and through the clouds and see if we can get up into the sky um I think this is a good add-on. I think you can do some good tweaks in this and at the same time <coughs> do some damage to the sim. Um, I'd be very careful about changing shaders, um, values, especially the tone map, um, and then applying that preset when you've updated or repaired your sim. I have a feeling it's going to um, corrupt the sim unless you know these guys have updated their product to fall in line with the current uh, shaders. Um, I think this is uh, a worthy uh, addition for using it. Um, I definitely will be taking advantage of it. Um, and uh, yeah. One thing I would say is when you're doing your tweaks, make sure that you are not pointed towards the sun because it's going to give you false values. So if you do want to tweak, uh, which I can't even find the sun in the sky, there it is, make sure that you're flying away from it. Um, don't fly towards the sun to make any changes because if you've got EA turned on, that sun value there is absolutely accurate and um, is directional, uh, unlike if you're using the legacy, like EA turned off, and you're using the legacy side of it, it's a static set value, so it's easier to tweak with EA off. Um, EA turned on, you wanna make sure that you're not pointing towards the sun, that you're pointing away from it, and the light values that you see will be more accurate. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this. Uh, don't forget, I give 50 euros of Sim Market vouchers away every month. All you have to be in with a chance to win is a subscriber on my channel, and put a comment down below, and at the end of the month, during my live vlog, I choose a winner. Thank you so much for watching this, guys. And I'll see you in the virtual skies. Bye-bye.